Okay guys, this is my initial thoughts after the LSU versus Alabama game. And I have a lot of things that I probably can make videos on that I probably will, to be honest. I'm just gonna give you these first thoughts and then we can talk about that. So the thing that caught my attention the most was that LSU was so confident walking into this game. Ed Orgeron, Joe Burrow, the receivers, all walked in believing they would win this game. And after the game, during the interview, Joe Burrow spoke as if LSU being in the SEC championship game was a foregone conclusion. He talked as if, you know, they don't even have more games to come. And it wasn't, it didn't seem like it was out of arrogance. It just seemed like they were really confident that he's saying like, no, this is just natural. This is what we're gonna do. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. And that's something that I walked away really respecting about this LSU team. They walked into Tuscaloosa and played the way they did because they believed they were supposed to win. And just gotta say wow that's crazy so there's a lot to say about this game as i've already said but i will start with this congratulations to lsu for simply executing well they didn't hurt themselves with simple mistakes like alabama did and that really helped them down the stretch um, joe burrow is extremely efficient and extremely accurate for a while it looked like he couldn't miss he hit 13 straight completions to start this game, if you didn't know, which is crazy. Um, he, he would hit his receivers and running backs in places where they would catch the ball and just be able to turn up the field and get more yards. And that was a big part of why they kept converting um, situations in which Alabama had them dead to rights. I want to take a second to say that I was correct about Alabama being able to use Anthony Jennings and Terrell Lewis on the outside pass rush to... Um, pressure Joe Burrow and also have just a, a limited front and stopping the run while dedicating their secondary to leverage against the wide receivers. A lot of people in my comment sessions and a couple of my previews said that Alabama couldn't do that because they're not Auburn and they don't have that type of rush. And I was like, no, what you don't understand is that Alabama doesn't have the same type of rush as Auburn. Maybe not, especially on those inside guys, like the defensive tackles like Derrick Brown, but Terrell Lewis and Anthony James can rush from the outside. So I wasn't saying that they had to do the same exact thing that Auburn did, just some form and they did alabama played with six dbs for a majority of this game and i would just got to stroke my own ego a little bit right there no i'm kidding but seriously they they played really well and they they did something i didn't think ultimately um, alabama actually sacked joe burrow five times in this game um uh, on another note actually jamar chase had an excellent game uh, he had a good battle versus Trevon Diggs. And not all of these his yards and catches came from his battle with Diggs. Like he caught a, uh, a deep pass on a pick route that Patrick Satan was involved in. And, you know, not everything came from direct man-to-man -man coverage where he just flat out beat an Alabama DB. And on that note overall, a lot of people are going to look at the stats of this game and simply think that these defenses were bad, the secondaries played bad. But honestly, a lot of passes and yards came from plays that didn't involve the DBs directly. And the defenses actually had a few highlight spots throughout this game. It's just that when you play great offenses, they're going to find ways to move the ball and score points. But the average person who just looks at the stats and looks at the box score, they won't realize that unless they deeply watch the game. And so back to Jamar Chase. There were times where Trevon Diggs just flat out got beat. And on one of those times, actually, um, he got away with a pass interference where Jamar Chase probably would have had a really deep ball, maybe a touchdown if he hadn't interfered with him. And so that was one where he just got flat out beat. There's also cases where Trevon Diggs just had bad luck. So one play, Trevon Diggs tried to jam Jamar Chase. And after jamming him, he fell over. Jamar Chase got wide open 10 yards down the field, caught a pass and had a 20 something yard gain. And so you can't really say that, oh, that was like Alabama's defense being bad or secondary. No, that was just Jamar Chase uh, receiving the fortunate look of Trevon Diggs falling over. But like I said, at the same time, there are plenty of cases where he just flat out beat him too. So it was a good battle, a good little chess match between the two. While we're talking about receivers, the Alabama receivers also had a few uncharacteristic drops, including Jerry Judy. He had two of them, actually. One of them was early in the game on a deep, skinny post where Trio Tongavaloa put the ball perfectly up the field in his hands, and he dropped it, and that was going to be a touchdown. Also, late in the game when Alabama was coming back, he dropped a third and two in the red zone, a slant inside of the end zone. That was a guaranteed touchdown. The ball hit him right in the hands, and he dropped it. Luckily, he made the next catch on fourth down to, you know, get those points and get Alabama back in it. But it was very uncharacteristic. Devonta Smith also dropped the pass. And so Alabama receivers usually don't drop passes like this. So that was weird. Now, my two um, game ball MVPs and you know, my trophies. 
They're going to the two running backs in this game. Clyde Edwards Hilaire from LSU number 22. And number 22, so the two number 22s, Najee Harris of Alabama, played an outstanding game. People don't realize that these boys, like the the coaches, the offensive schemes went through the running backs in the second half. And a lot of people don't realize that. They're gonna look at those yards, like I said, and think like, oh, like they carved up these defenses, these secondaries. Uh, no, Najee Harris and Clyde Edwards Hilaire had both rushing yards and receiving yards, and they both caught a lot of passes in the flat and on screens. And even Najee Harris' case, a back shoulder body control, like reach out and grab the ball like a receiver touchdown while Alabama was coming back. And they really were the engines that kept the offenses going in the second half. You got to go back and watch it. It was just really fun to see. I think Clyde's ever hilarious before this game. He, I was starting to like him. And after this game, I think he's going to be a solid NFL running back. And I, I will put him on my team. That's how much he impressed me today. Great footwork. He put some great spin moves on some people. He looked like he came right out of Madden with some of the things that he did. Um, I also say that Tua Tungvaluwa played a good game despite some early rust. He definitely looked like he hadn't practiced um, in three weeks, and, uh, and it looked like it was going to be rough for a while, but he started to get his feet kind of moved along. He also had to do some pain management. He took some hits. You could tell his ankle was sore. He was basically flat out limping by the time the game was over, and so that was unfortunate for him. Uh, but he figured it out. Um, it took a while to get going, but once he got comfortable and back in the, uh, like the smooth of things, he looked good in the second half, despite the fact that LSU's Dave Aranda had a really good game plan for attacking the Tua Tungvaluwa offense. But uh, Steve Sarkeesian got to give him some credit for switching it up and allowing him to uh, make a difference there. There were a few passes in which I thought, this is some of the most accurate passes I've ever seen Tua Tungvaluwa make. One of those was the 85 yarder that he threw to Devonta Smith against Stingley late in the game, where the ball literally just landed right in Devonta Smith's hands as he streaked up the field on a go route. A normal go route was like, wow. And Tua threw to the far side of the field too. And I was just like, that's just flat out impressive. It's a really good throw. So Tua has some good plays. One of the most talked about aspects or like one of the things that I wish was more talked about that a lot of people aren't talking about is that LSU converted some very unlikely third downs in this game. And I'm talking like some crazy third and tens, third and sevens, third and eights, where it's just like the drive was over. Alabama had them dead to rights and Joe Burrow would get a crazy scramble. Clyde Edwards Lair would catch the ball in the flat and run through like two people for a first down. They would run the ball and get a big gash up them. It was like, where are these things coming from? And there was just one play in particular where I, that made me realize that this was happening a lot it was on a third and 10 late in the game. There was pressure. Alabama got on Joe Burrow. Burrow just got the ball out, threw it to um, Edward Hilaire in the flat, like six or seven yards short of the first down. Trevon Diggs comes up. Tre <laughs> Edward Hilaire like runs through him, kind of has him holding on to his back and runs with him like four or five yards through the first down marker before he gets hit and fall out of bounds. But that's just indicative of the type of third down conversions they were making in this game and that, that type of play made me just go wow actually when i saw it and uh it was i was just impressed i was impressed i really was and the last thing i'll say is that the lsu defense was able to manufacture some pressure on Tua tongue of Iloa with some good scheming from dave aranda like i was just saying a few seconds ago dave aranda had some blitzes that were coming from some awkward places and it really threw alabama off early in the game especially as Tua was still getting used to being rusty and not quite being able to move around as well. Alabama adjusted to it well in the second half, but it was really awkward to start this game and see, and um, gotta give it up for Dave Aranda there. So despite the final score, I'm gonna say it again, and I'm, I'm banging the table for this, all those who may disagree, the defenses were not bad in this game. Like, they made mistakes. There are some issues that they can correct. They obviously weren't perfect at all, but they weren't bad. The secondaries actually did a fairly good job. Um, there's some run fits. There were some issues. They, um, the linebackers could have filled some gaps better at different times. But when you have these offenses that are this high powered, they're going to find ways to get the ball to people in places where the normal or the average offenses wouldn't take these check downs. And their check down guys can't run through two or three guys for a first down to convert drives and keep things going. So despite those ending stat lines, um, there was some good defensive play. So like I said, I probably have a lot of videos to make in this game. Um, so hopefully you'll be here for them all. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Let me know what you think about this game.